Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We are the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may not have prepared you for, and they probably didn't. Uh, as always, I'm AJ, and sitting across me, Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? Oh, it's a great day, AJ. I think it's going to rain later, um, but walk my girls to school, got, you know, got some exercise in, so good, starting off well. I got my extra. I walked to the car, then drove my girls to the school. That was well, you know, we're exercise. pretty we're pretty lucky. I'm <clears throat> two. It's a two mile loop for me to drop one, you know, one daughter at one school, another daughter at another school, and make it back exactly two miles. So, you know, I do that. I take the dog on the walk as well. So, and kill all, you know, kill all those uh, birds with just that one stone. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I you know wake up, drive them, come back, start working. Um. That's our morning routine. Yeah. <laughs> but So what you want to talk about today? You know, today I think we're going to continue on with the live series. You know, that series we started last last uh, week was was good. Mm-hmm. We, we, we found, you know, kind of a, an area I think we, we needed to talk about um, because we've really focused in on school or career. But outside of that, and we and, and interestingly enough, you know, way back in our earlier episodes, we talked about the work-school-life balance. Mm-hmm. And yet everything for us has been work and school. So we're trying to add that balance in of life and start talking about life and kind of help you. That's, that's a good segue, I guess. Absolutely. Um, well, we're going to be talking about today in that live series, the understanding opportunity. And I think this is something that's near and dear to your heart. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Before we do, let me remind everybody, visit our website, reschool.com. Check us out on the social media handles and, of course, on your favorite podcasting app. Most importantly, send us messages, right? Rate us highly. Let us know what you want to hear about. Okay. But Absolutely. I, yeah. So, uh, but what were you saying, AJ? Well, I was saying, you know, this is something that's near and dear to your heart. I think this is something that you talk about in your class too, uh, or at least some of your classes about, you know, understanding opportunity, how to take advantage of opportunity, how to find opportunity, how to mm-hmm. create opportunity for yourself. Uh, yeah, believe and, it or not, I actually wrote a kid's poem about it that uh, I put it out there on social media. It's you have popular. a lot of hats. Are, yeah. You have a ton of hats. Yeah, right. So, but yeah, this is, it's, it's, I mean, it, it goes further than career development, right? It's, it's all about being, you know, becoming whoever you want to be, right? And the concept comes down to opportunity. So I basically took a more systematic approach to say, you know, what, what exactly does that mean type thing? So yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm glad you want to talk about this today. This is going to be a good topic. Well, I do think it's, it's also really relevant at this time right now too, because I think there's a lot of burnout in career. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously school can be, you know, an issue, it can be a stressor. Uh, and then life just in general, you know, people in college, you're, you're wondering about life career. You're wondering about life, you know, as you're, as you're aging, you're wondering about life. Um, and this is just one of those areas that I think can at least put some perspective into your life and understanding you know, how to make the most out of it. So let's get to the yeah. quick question. What is the biggest opportunity you've ever had in your life? Can you oh, think man. of one? B- biggest opportunity. Um, well, obviously, you know, everybody can say, you know, getting married and stuff like that, having kids. Um, but early on, I would say the one that changed my career path, my life more than anything was, uh, was going into the military and that, that was, that was a huge one because it opened up a ton of doors afterwards that otherwise probably would have remained closed. So that, that was it. What about you? Do you have one? Yeah. You know, you're talking about, you know, the, the marriage, you're talking about the kids. I mean, those are the kind of the checkpoints of life. Uh, I think a mm-hmm. lot of people, uh, you know, see it as, um, I would say probably the biggest opportunity was, a school, like a college team that I was a part of. I think Mm -hmm. I've mentioned this on, on, on past episodes, but, and, and, and honestly, it was an opportunity that started with my dad because he was the, cause he was the, he worked at the college. He was the Dean of school of business and he was kind of the academic advisor for this, this club team. So it was Mm -hmm. like a club, but it was a team in the sense that we, we competed. So we had to go give presentations and stuff. And he was a, he was the academic advisor of that. And, I kind of saw that as an opportunity to, I saw what they were doing. I, I used that kind of his ex, spending time with him with, with what he was doing when I wasn't a part of it, when I was in high school and such. 
um, and understood what it was all about and realized kind of what I could do with it um, and what it can become, potentially become. And, and, and honestly, it was a lot of, you know, I get to travel, you know, I get to go do different things. I get to be put myself in positions where I would have never had that opportunity um, mm-hmm. meeting CEOs and stuff like that. And so I would say that was probably outside of, again, the obvious checkpoints of life. Uh, that was probably my, my biggest opportunity that I, I took advantage of and, and got a lot out of it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I got to travel to, you know, two continents. Um, like I said, I got to do presentations, learn how to do presentations in front of really high profile people. So I would say that would probably be my biggest one. Well, you, you said something interesting right there, uh, you know, taking advantage of the mm-hmm. opportunity. Uh, so I think what we're probably going to talk about today is one, there's, you know, basically breaking down opportunity into understanding the the creation of opportunities for yourself or how you, how you find opportunities or how you come into contact with them. Right. Yeah. And then there's the whole aspect of, you know, once an opportunity does present itself, you have to actually recognize it for what it is. And I'd say that's one of the biggest uh, gaps in, in what people expect in terms of what it means to, to achieve something or to, uh, like I say, take advantage of, of something that presents itself. You don't realize what it, what the opportunity is in itself, what it takes to, to, uh, what it takes to take advantage of it, to get to that stage where you can, you can really exploit the opportunity for all the benefits that it has to offer for you. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's a good segue in, uh, into, uh, our first topic here. Um, so, uh, so what, what's, what do me, we have on the docket? What's our first topic? Yeah. So the, the, the first question I have, and I think this is, this is kind of what you're leading into is what do you mean by opportunity? Like when we talk about mm-hmm. taking advantage of opportunity or opportunity, this, what do you mean by that? Let's define it first. So if we were to look at, look at it in, in say our career school life thing, right? We all have these goals. We all, all have these objectives that we want to achieve in life. Okay. We have these ideas of what we could be, our potential, things like that. Wherever that comes from, right? It could be, you know, your upbringing, it could be your environment, it could be your social influences, that, those types of things. But we all have this idea of things. Now, you understand that to do any of these things, there's generally a path to get there. It's not just here's one thing you have to do and there you go, you've achieved what you want to, right? If your dream is to win the lottery, right, that might be true. The only thing you got to do is is buy the lottery ticket and have the numbers come up. But if it's anything else, normally it's a whole course of conduct. It is a whole course of things that have to happen, yeah. right? So when we're talking about opportunity, we're talking about the situation the scenario, or maybe even a step in a path towards something comes up, right? Uh, it realizes itself. It comes into existence because I, I'm cautious to use just that phrase, it turns up, right? Yeah. Uh, because oftentimes it, it doesn't just turn up, right? There, there is a systematic way to create that opportunity. Um, some people, bypass part of the steps, right? And, and an opportunity presents itself a little bit easier for them than others, just for any number of reasons, whether it's where you live, the family you were born into, your socioeconomic background, any of those things play a huge part in what opportunities arise for you and what it takes for you to make those opportunities or create those opportunities for yourself, right? So anyway, when we say opportunity, we're just talking about something that leads you along the pathway towards what you'd like to achieve or who you'd like to become. It's normally yeah. how I like to find it. I, I don't know. Do you have a different concept of, of opportunity? No, I don't. And I, I think, I think we tend to, and I think this is probably going to be the, the, the harder part of this topic for people. And this is kind of why we're, we're wanting to do this, this episode dealing with understanding opportunity. I think it's, it's really easy for people to, identify opportunity in hindsight. I mean, mm-hmm. we can always look back and go, ah, that was an opportunity or that was an opportunity I took. Um, and it led to this, this, and it, and it's, it sometimes is fun to look back and go, okay, I am here because of the decisions that I made here, 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 and here. These are kind of the forks in the road that I had, but those forks in the road come from a place of opportunity. Like it, those, mm-hmm. those don't just pop up. They, they come from prior decisions that you made, prior opportunities that you, you took advantage of, even knowing or even not knowing that you, you, they were opportunities. 
again, mm-hmm. until you look back at them. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with, with the definition that you just, you just said, like I said, I think the hard part is going to be looking at it from a, a prospective, um, perspective, a viewpoint, mm-hmm. then a retrospective kind of uh, hindsight viewpoint. So that's, yeah. that's well, that, that's a about. natural bias we all have, you know, you've oh, heard yeah. hindsight bias, it's oh, that yeah. Monday morning quarterback, uh, yeah. you know, after you see something, you're like, oh, I should have, I should have bought that Bitcoin when it was 50 bucks a piece, yeah. or yeah. I should have, you know, done, you know, done this or that, that type of thing. And you're like, it should have been so obvious to me when in reality, it really wasn't obvious to anyone. Right, you know, it's like, it's interesting because you, you're talking about that. And I read, there's, you know, some meme on social media or something I saw. Somebody had posted, one of my friends had posted something and or they commented on, I can't remember what it was. But it was really interesting because at face value, you look at it and you go, okay, that's an easy question or easy answer. But then you look back and go, well, and the question was, it's a would you rather. So let's, I'll do it on you, okay? Mm-hmm. Would you rather receive $10 million just right up front, or would you rather be able to go back in time and fix all of your mistakes? Oh, definitely back in time. Well, see, and that's the, that was the question. And the, the person said that it was, a, it was no brainer, $10 million. And I got to think, I was like, well, okay, $10 million would be good. But, you know, going back in time and fixing all your mistakes, then it comes to what is an actual mistake? Is it a, is a mistake a missed opportunity? Or is it something you thought you were doing correctly. So like my, my mind went, would be go to, to investing. Like is the fact that I missed investing in something, is that a mistake or is that just an, uh, an opportunity that I missed? And what, how would it change your life moving forward? That, I guess that would be, uh, you know, I answer quickly, but I'd be scared. So what if yeah. I did step back into my 20 year old self and said, invest in this or do this, and exactly. would, uh, you know, uh, have, it, it probably would have changed things. I might not yeah. have, followed the current path of my life and that would worry me right because, yeah exactly you know pretty content with where things are going or at least yeah. where they've gone thus far knock on wood right yeah <clears throat> what if it would have changed things for the worse yeah obviously the money aspect we know a lot of people are not contented by having money and you know that that's certainly not the happiness factor you know it, it doesn't necessarily bring fulfillment um uh, yeah. So I don't I, know. I don't know. Yeah. That's an interesting. When I saw it, I was like, well, it's easy. And then I got to thinking about it more and more. I was like, that's not as easy as I thought. And it, a lot of it has to do with, like you said, like, what is it? One, what is a mistake? And then two, how's it going to affect the life that you have now? So and if I, if, if I had to go back, if anybody asked me, <clears throat> if you could, if somebody asked me, if we gave you $10 million, would you go back and do, have to redo all the things you've done thus far in your life? And my answer would be very much no. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I look back on it and, you know, lots of people look back on the past fondly, yeah. right? You you start to forget the negative things. We always look back. Of course. And even something that was negative, we see it as more positive, mm-hmm. you know? I, yeah. I've, you know, and I spent a long time, I went through a time period when I was basically just writing down experiences mm-hmm. from my life. That I was like, well, I don't want to forget that. So let's, and I, I was writing it out in kind of memoir style. And as I did, just on the surface, I remembered it as being, oh, that was a neat experience. I should write that up. But as I got into it, some of the feelings, the emotions, everything, my situation at the time came back and I started remembering that. And by and large, everything just started becoming more and more negative. Like I started remembering like, God, this was painful. God, this was so much work. God, this was, uh, it did not have the outcome I thought it did, it would. You know, uh, the uncertainty of the period, uh, I reminded me the uncertain, you know, it reminded me that I didn't know where I was and what was going to come next. And looking back, it's easy because you've already walked down that path. I'm like, oh, my God, you I don't think you could pay me enough money if I had to go (laughs) through the exact same things as I did. I don't think you could pay me enough money to do it again if I didn't know. Right. If I if if I didn't know what my future would hold. Yeah. Like, See, I, I, I love thinking now I've jumped back in college and just do all this. Yeah. But if I did, I wouldn't know that I would get to follow on with a career or a lot yeah. of the life that I have now. 
right? You know that uh, that part I'm one of those people that I, I didn't peak in uh, I didn't peak in high school, didn't peak in college, didn't peak in early career. This this is as good as this ever gotten for me right now. <laughs> yeah, that part where you said, you know, would you go back if you didn't know the the outcome? That's the, that's mm-hmm. the that was the key because as you were talking, I was like, you know what, I would, knowing where I'm at now, I would go back and live relive you know, from high school, you know, uh, graduating high school to where I am now. I think, cause I mean, of course the bad stuff, but I know where I'm at now, not knowing what the outcome is and having to relive that. Yeah. That would have been, that would be pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I, I would take, I would take the 10 million. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, Our, just, just drop that in my lap. <laughs> well, next question, because now that we've defined opportunity, I think some of the listeners may want to know, you know, how can, how can you create more opportunities? So what are some ways that people can create more opportunities for themselves? And this is, this is from kind of two vantages. This is from a quantity and also magnitude. Like how can you make, get more opportunities and how can you get better opportunities? So to start with, you know, we go back to the definition and say, everything's a stepping path, right? It's, it's a, you know, you're going to have different things that have to happen in your life to make it to where you want to go or who you want to be. So you have to start by identifying those and say, what could potentially happen for me? And then you break it down further and say, all right, these are the incremental steps to get there. What do I need to do to bring those into existence? You identify some of them that are small. Maybe fairly easy for you. That is, go to go to school. Believe it or not, that's a fairly small one. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. But it's something you know you can do, right? You know you can make that happen. If you want to be a movie actor, a small step might be moving to L.A. or New York or somewhere like that. The harder step might actually be landing a, a role, right? Yeah. There, there might be a million incremental steps like hiring an agent, you know, getting headshots done, whatever. Yeah. What, I don't know that much about that industry, but there's a ton of things that have to happen, right? But the one big thing is, well, you, you have to le- – you know, you have to land that initial part and there could be things that you could do to do that, whether that's go to additional training, practice sessions, make additional connections with people, um, uh, write a screenplay yourself. That would be a big one, yeah. right? Type scenario that you get shopped around and adopted, right? Or you you pre-produce and do your own sizzle reel or short on it. So, you know, all of a sudden people envision you or the producer envisions you in the um in the role type scenario. So all of these small incremental things, well, but I would say this, like you have to start with what you're dreaming of and break it down into however many steps exist to, to achieve or be what you, what you have in mind. And then you have to start, you know, making those a reality. Some of them will depend 100% on yourself enrolling in school. Because you can enroll in school, you can get, you know, student loans, you can show up to class, you can do all you can do all that yourself. You don't need anybody else. Other things you're going to need other people. So That's it sounds like whole. a sounds like a perfect segue into or not segue, but a, a recall from a past episode of your your life board. You know, yes. your, your life plan. Yes, absolutely. And if y'all hadn't heard that episode, basically we just talk about envisioning the future and all those steps that come about again. It also brings into that whole networking thing, yeah. right? If you need somebody else, their help, then you need your network. You need their assistance. You need something from them, right, to to check that box, to take that step towards what you want to be. What, so, you know, whatever you have in mind, again, for the creation of opportunities, you got to identify all those check the boxes and you got to do them. Would you would I, you agree with this statement? of most most life plans which require opportunities mm-hmm. require two sides it's yourself and somebody else you're going to yes. need help from somebody else absolutely very few people ever became what they could become or wanted to become completely on their own yeah the very whole rare. self-made thing I've, I've always kind of you know you, you talk about even the the what we consider the the what we look at in success typically goes to money. So if you look at the billionaires of the world, a lot of people say that they're self-made billionaires. In reality, they're not. They've had some help somewhere along the line getting started. And financial is just one piece. There's so many people that came into play, like the people that influenced your mindset. 
yeah. right? The people who just let you bunk on their couch, because if they hadn't allowed you to do that, you never would have gotten to move to that town. Yep. The people who loaned you their car, the people who helped you move in, the people who introduced you to somebody so you got this opportunity. There's always going to be, without fail, always going to be people involved, even if it's at the most bare basic level where they influence you, even inadvertently, right? You're, you're always going to need people, other people in the process. So be, between the two, I, I'd say that's, yeah, essential. Well, my, 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 uh, my answer to this question, as you were talking, it just kind of popped in my head about, you know, how to create more opportunities for yourself, both in, in terms of quantity and size. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big believer of taking risks. I'm, I'm more mm-hmm. of a risk accepting, accept, accepting person versus an, a risk averse. Um, mm-hmm. And those risks typically are opportunities. I mean, we look at them going, well, that's a huge risk. Well, that's an opportunity as well. I mean, it could fail. It could, it could succeed. And that success could lead you on to the next step that you're, you're trying to get to. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we, had, we took this class while we were at residency um, and it was a, I can't remember the, the, the term of the title for the course. Um, it's a, it's a nonprofit, I guess, company that helps people understand how to, uh, make, how to, how to essentially identify opportunities is kind of what it gets to, they call it something different, but you know, their, their motto is, is fail early and fail often. Mm-hmm. You know, the more chances you take at a younger age, the more likely you can make up for those, those failures, but also it could lead to success. And if you're not failing a lot, then you're not taking enough risk to get that opportunity to get that success. Mm-hmm. So mine tends to be that risk side of it. I'm the one that tends to look at things and go, yeah, there's a risk to it, but perhaps the, the, the success is, is more valuable than the, the risk that it, it comes. So, and so, so that's a very be, interesting topic. I want to ask you about this. Yeah. So I tend to be what I've always thought of as terribly risk averse. Mm-hmm. But I'm in entrepreneurship, right? And and that tends to be very risk prone, at least people perceive it as such. But here's the thing that a lot of studies have shown now about entrepreneurs in particular, mm-hmm. that they undertake something and they don't perceive the So if you look at risk, risk is a probability of a negative occurrence. Mm-hmm. You may see an, an opportunity, Right that I call, that I don't see as an opportunity because I see it as having a high degree of probability of failure. You see the probability of failure as lower for yourself. So you see it as an opportunity where I don't. Now, here's the thing. It's the same for both of us. It doesn't change. But how we perceive something changes. So if you get somebody who's very confident, in themselves or just in how the world's going to go for them. They don't see something as a risk the same way that other people see it as a risk. So it's kind of that glass half empty versus glass half full, right? I look at what could go wrong and automatically equate that it might go wrong for me and I couldn't, wouldn't be able to stand that where you would look at it and say, well, it could go wrong, but probably not. So I'm going to, and, and that changes what we see as actually being an opportunity or not. Yeah. Now I would say, and, and granted, I, I wouldn't take you as a very, a very risk averse person. Um, mm-hmm. Just knowing your background of, of entrepreneurship, but at the same time, like you're talking about how we see risk. I can see where you're going with that, but I would also argue that it's not that I don't, I don't value the risk. Um, as much as somebody who's risk averse, I would almost say that in my head, I identify it. I, I did I identify the same risk. So if you and I were in, in looking at the same opportunity and we were identifying risk, if you're very risk averse, you're going to identify a whole lot more risk. Whereas somebody who's not as risk averse, they're not going to look at a lot of these things maybe as risk as much as a hurdle. Mm-hmm. It's just something I got to get through. Like, and that's how a lot of it to me is when I justify stuff, I look at it more as, well, it's not really a risk. It's just something that I'm potentially going to have to, it's a, it's a potential hurdle, which again is risk. It's just not as significant in my head as, as what you would consider a risk. 
Um, mm-hmm. and that's, that's typically, like I said, that's where my mind typically goes. And that's why I've, again, I've, I've done a lot of stuff. I've, I've had a lot of opportunity, failed in some, succeeded in others. And the combination of all those failures and all those successes in those opportunities I've taken have got me to the point I am right now. Do, do you um, agree with our earlier conclusion that many of the opportunities that presented themselves to you? that you either created or they just came about was either by virtue of your own diligent effort or to create them, right? You, you took oh, yeah. the steps necessary to create them. Like you couldn't have your job if you didn't get your degrees. Oh yeah, uh, you, absolutely. You, you know, that type of thing. And the people you were around, the person I hear you bring up a lot is your dad, right? Yep. He was yep. obviously a heavy influence, not just in raising you, but also academically because he yep. led your school's department. Yeah, I would, right. I would definitely agree with that. There's no question um, that it was, it was not something that just fell in my lap. I don't mm-hmm. think any of my opportunities were something that, was, that fell in my lap. It was something that, you know, and even, even with the, the club that I was mentioning earlier uh, in college, my dad was over. It wasn't something he pushed me in. It was something mm-hmm. that I went through and I saw a lot of other students doing it. And I went to him and I was like, hey, can you tell me about this? And he explained it to me. I thought, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's the same thing as... as like, I, I'll, I'll use the example of when I first asked my wife out, mm-hmm. you know, on, on a date when we were in college. We were going to class together, and it wasn't like we, we just happened to drive up into the parking lot at the same time. We were, we'd never really spoken to each other. Um, I, I obviously had the hots for because she sat in, in the same class. We took the same class, but I just never talked to her. Um, and cause she was in the front and I was in the back. <laughs> and so we, uh, we, we got to school just so happened to be got, got to school at the same time. And we walk up to our class and class got canceled. And because we were standing there, we just kind of struck up a conversation, but you know, had I one not decided to go to class that day or decided to look at the internet. I mean, I, it was a, it was a, I didn't, I didn't do something right, which ended up causing an opportunity. Um, but also just understanding that was an opportunity to talk to her. And then that, that led into the opportunity to ask her. I didn't have to talk to her. I didn't have to mm-hmm. speak to her cause I could have been really shy. Um, but it was one, it just kind of a, a series of events. And, and it, actually there's more to the story because she, she would say, she's told me now that like one of the things that that really caught her eye about me, even though we had never talked before is when I opened the door for her at school and guided her in. And she said that that was one of the things that really caught her eye about our kind of first encounter. And so that was something that, you know, my mom raised me to do and it worked out. It led to an opportunity for me to ask her out. Mm -hmm. So it was was a combination of a series of events. So we, we've talked now a good bit about this whole, doing the steps necessary to make an opportunity arise, right? Some people will have to take less steps. You may be born into a scenario where opportunities uh, are more easy to bring about, right? You're born into a wealthy family. It might be a lot lot easier to talk to somebody and get an internship, right? Sure. Whatever. But also there's the next step, and and we break this into a three. There's opportunity creation, and then there's recognition, and there's exploitation, right? The recognition phase, right? That's the one where I see a lot of people falling short. They'll identify the things that need to happen. They'll work towards them. People will go to school. They'll get internships. They'll network with people. They'll develop skill sets. They will do all the things, right, that lead to whatever reality that they're pursuing. But then some oppor- some potential opportunity, because you have to say it's potential because, mm-hmm. you know, it, it didn't present itself yet. Some opportunity pres- presents itself and they don't recognize it. They don't show up. And you, you, we've all heard that old Woody Allen quote, right? Not 99 or 90% of success is just showing up. Yep. And it comes back to that adage, right? You've done the steps. You you now have the opportunity to meet somebody that will make all the difference in your life. You have the opportunity to whatever. 
to, to have an experience that'll be life changing to, um, yeah, I mean, just whatever it is relates to your objective and you don't show up. You don't recognize what it is. You don't put in that application, right? Where Why otherwise you-, you could you could have gotten a scholarship or you could have gotten into a different uh, school or you could have whatever. You don't put in the job application. You don't show up to meet somebody. You don't learn about something. You could have just read an article about something and it would change your life completely. All of this was an opportunity, an opportunity for a small step in that process towards what you want to be in life. You don't recognize it, so you don't show up. You don't take advantage of making that potential opportunity a real opportunity for you. So why is it so hard to recognize? Like, what's the thing that just makes people stop? Like, they don't, they don't, they just don't see it. I think it comes down to life experience, and that's why mentorship, in my mind, is so so important. And not just a single mentor. Mentors from across the spectrum, different types of people who look at things differently because they'll see the same situation, the same opportunity in different ways. But the more exposure you have, the more perspective you have, it'll make you say, I really, I don't want to do this, but I, I think I really should. And once you do it, you're like, oh, I see what what happened there. And if I hadn't done that, it would have made all the difference in the world. I never would have gotten my first teaching job if I hadn't taken a few steps that were very serendipitous, right? If I hadn't done something to find out about this opportunity at, at you know, where, where, where you and I both taught, mm-hmm. that type of thing. So there's all these small things that change your perspective on things. And I'd look back on it and I was like, well, what changed my perspective? Well, I remember that I started to go talk with professors and say, what do I need to do to do this for a career path? And they started giving me advice. If I had never done that, you know, I like to talk to people too. You know, I I never probably would have gotten my job if when I was in the military, if I hadn't sat down over a couple year period and done two research articles. Yeah. If I hadn't published those articles, I would have had no proof, no evidence, no anything that I had academic potential in that regard, and I never would have landed my job path. I'd like to say I had the foresight to to do that that far in advance, but it was really more about, I don't know exactly what this will lead to, whether it'll help me in my military career, will will it help me in, in my next job assignment, will it help me when I get out of the military, will it get into a school, will it help me? I didn't know how it was, but I did for some reason have the foresight that it had value. And that was just because of the perspective I achieved from the people around me, how they influenced me. So anyway, that's that's my perspective on it. That's my belief as to why people can't recognize it. Let me let me follow that up with another question because this one again popped in my head as you were talking. And do you feel like the reason why a lot of people, or some people, I won't say a lot, but some people don't take advantage of opportunity when opportunity presents itself is because they're too tunnel visioned in a sense. And let me, I'll, 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 let me say it a different way. Do you feel like people tend to, to see a potential opportunity, but they don't see it with a quick reaction, like a, a quick result. They don't, they, when they, when they take an opportunity, a lot of times they would rather have a quick result. So that opportunity leads to a quick outcome versus this opportunity may lead to another opportunity versus, uh, you know, that leads to another opportunity that leads to another opportunity that finally eventually gets to your outcome. Yeah, I I definitely think so. I mean, if we're looking at this whole idea of saying recognizing something, a potential opportunity comes along and you see what it could lead to, but you might be wrong. It may lead to so much more. Sure. And if you were wrong about that, you did not recognize the opportunity for what it was. And if you see something that's a faster, you believe it's a faster approach to the same end, the same, you know, goal, it may not be. So once again, you did not recognize what was the opportunity and you misrecognize something as being a potential opportunity. So you can see why I like to break opportunity yeah. down into generation, doing all the yeah. things that would be necessary for an opportunity to present itself. And then the recognition of it as being, how do you see this thing that came about? 
do you see it as, oh, this is better than this because it would lead to this outcome faster or easier or cheaper or better or bigger outcome, when in reality, it wouldn't. You see it with investors all the time, wanting to go for the quick buck, right? Yeah. The quick investment, that type of thing, versus somebody who says, no, that's a flash in the pan. It's not, you see this as a means to your end goal of building up a portfolio or being wealthy or whatever. But really the opportunity is in this, right? It's that that Warren Buffett approach versus I'm going to go let it all ride on the ponies, right? <laughs> approach, sure. um, long-term, short-term, that type of thing. So you you see something differently. So you don't recognize the true nature of the potential opportunity in front of you. And again, well, we ta- I think that comes comes down to context. Yeah. Well, we've talked about creation. We've talked about recognition. Now let's talk about the last step, which is the exploitation side of it. What are some of the best ways somebody can exploit an opportunity? So we've, well, we've created it. We've, op- we've recognized it. Now what do we do? Well, well that's, that's what we're all told from the beginning. Yeah. That's the American dream, right? Sure. You work hard. You can be anything you want to be. You can achieve whatever you want. When largely, sadly enough, that's not necessarily true. Because of the first two phases we talked about. You may not know what it takes to create an opportunity and you may not have the background, the context, the awareness to recognize an opportunity when it presents itself or you might misjudge one when it does present itself. But what we're all beat into our heads from the very beginning is if you work hard towards something, so you recognize something as an opportunity, meaning that if I do this, it will have a good outcome. Lots of times that if I do this is a lot of hard work. Yeah. Diligent, directed effort towards something to take advantage of the potential benefit that is there. Now, do you always have to work super hard to take advantage of something? No. Sometimes you just have to put in a fine, you know, there's there's a diminishing amount of return. You put in the minimum effort and this will get you the benefit. Put in more effort, it gets you no additional benefit. That would be right in your realm, right? Just yeah, I love that one. Strategically just, lazy, as you say. I love that one. You're speaking my language there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, w- what you're saying when you say strategically lang- lazy is don't don't fall victim to that law of diminishing returns. If you know what the standard is for something, if you want to exceed the standard, if that has a benefit to you, whether it's personal benefit of satisfaction or something like that, great. But if if the standard is the standard, right, why excel and go above and beyond if it does not provide any additional value to you? Like we, we hear all the time now about quiet quitting, right? Yeah. That's in the news. I was like going to bring that up to you. And that's just pe- people. And I heard a, an amazing quote. I didn't hear it. I read it on uh, yeah. LinkedIn. A professor said, his student said, why are they calling it quitting? You haven't quit your job. If there's a standard for you to meet, as long as you meet that standard, that's fine. If you were exceeding the standard, but you pull back like crazy and just do the bare minimum, you're still doing the standard for the job. Now, if going above and beyond will give you greater benefit, then do it, right? It, or the benefit is worth it, right? The time balance and stuff like that. But the idea of that is getting promoted. Right. So you set a minimum standard. If you want people to work harder, give them more title, give them more money, give them more benefits, give them more autonomy, give them whatever, whatever it is they need or want that will motivate them. But as long as they meet the standard. So there you go. Uh, When it comes to exploiting the opportunity. You work hard to the extent it is required to get the benefit you desire from a potential scenario. If working harder will produce an additional benefit. And this, again, is an opportunity recognition thing. Some people don't realize that I'm given this standard. I've got to, I don't know, but let's, I've got to put these 10 rocks on in this bin, right? I got to yeah. fill up this bin with the rocks. Got to put these 10 rocks in there. That's the minimum standard. But if you were to put 20 rocks in there, that would be a ton of additional effort for maybe very not obvious return. 
But some people might see it as, oh, I recognize that if I do put 20 rocks in there, someone else is going to see it or it's going to have this effect and it's going to mean I don't have to do this later or I I might get a promotion so I don't yep. even have to do this anymore. I might be supervising people who put rocks in. So they recognize that potential opportunity by working harder. So when I say exploit an opportunity, I mean work hard enough to meet the standard that is there. Mm-hmm. I also mean do the other things necessary to bring about the expectation. So if you're hired for many jobs, and this is something that that plagues women in the workforce, research has shown that women tend to be more proficient in their job tasks and functions than men early on in their professional careers. That is for professional service providers. Yet men promote more quickly. Why? A lot of research indicates that there's a strong tendency towards, uh, you know, historically you have male management, right? That, you know, the years of past prejudices against women in the workplace led to a hierarchy of men in upper echelons. Most people move up riding the coattails of their managers. And the people who move up are not the ones who do their job the very best. It's the people who relate the best with the people above them. And just because it may be easier for a man to relate to a man based upon commonality of interest, in in addition to just the physical nature of of, uh, relating with other people. Well, again, if you didn't realize that creating that commonality Uh, endearing yourself to the person ahead of you so you would move up along with them, then you didn't do the things necessary to exploit the opportunity. So it's kind of like the same things that you do to create the opportunity in the first place. You work hard towards whatever is required of you, but you also do the things like networking, meeting other people, um, acquiring additional skills that will be useful for the next position, all of those things. Now, I know I've talked for a long time there, but that is what that that is the genesis behind exploiting an opportunity, right? Turning what exists into even something more. So I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think it boils down to me what I was saying earlier, which is the the risk. You know, you have to be able to if, if you've created the opportunity and you've already recognized the opportunity, then and you, you have this opportunity in front of you, there's this point in time where you're going to have to look at it and go, am I going to risk whatever for this opportunity, which could lead to more opportunities, or am I not? And if you're fearful of the risk, then there are times when you're going to take the safe route, which is the status quo, and you're not going to do anything or take advantage of it. On the other side, if you do, then it could lead to other things. And, and that that fear of not knowing the other side of if you risk it on the good side, I think is what holds a lot of people back. You know, you can, like we were just talking about, we can, when it comes to risk, we can always identify the negative things that could happen. Mm -hmm. We can most of the time identify at least one positive thing that could happen, but what it could lead to, I don't think we have that ability. I mean, that's, that's, you know, future stuff that we can't foresee. And I think that's the scary part. So at a certain Mm -hmm. point, if you're willing to, if you've done all the, the creation, you've done all the recognition, if you're not willing to risk it at some point, then I think all that other work that you've put in is, is you know, all for naught, uh, mm-hmm. essentially. I mean, think about, it. you know, you're talking about the creation side. The hard work that goes into creation, you know, you're putting in work to do something like, to me, my, my opportunity right now is I'm going back to school. Okay, mm-hmm. well, that's that's hard work. I mean, that's, I mean, I've got, I just had to review a 126 page article that wasn't fun. And Mm -hmm. it's, and I don't know what it could lead to. I know what one option is. Same thing with my wife. My wife is now in a program. We don't know what it could lead to, but we have hopes on it. And there's a risk to it. Obviously it could risk that our, our hopes um, may not turn out like our, our plans may not turn out the way it is. There's a risk in that. It could be, Mm -hmm. I guess you'd look at it as it's a waste wasted money, wasted time for her, wasted effort. But who knows what it could lead to and other things that we're not seeing. Mm -hmm. And we felt that that was a, a risk worth taking. I mean, it was, it was something that we could look at. Hopefully we'll be able to look at in the next five to 10 years and go, it was a good risk. Even if, even if our plan didn't work out, it led to other things. 
and that's mm-hmm. what she's hoping for. Um, well, your so your scenario is a perfect reflection of you know the model of you have this objective, this goal, right? This idea of uh, rank in academia, salary, uh, that type of thing, right? Yeah. And you know what the steps are to get there. And this is one of those steps. So you're actively undertaking it. So going to getting into this school and doing it on its own is an opportunity. But the greater opportunity is what you see on the other side. You're trying to create the opportunity by doing this. Okay. Based upon the context and experience that you have throughout your life, through your current job, through your current career, and your wife, through you, what she's seen through you and your dad. She recognizes that a potential opportunity exists from doing something like this, right? That type of thing. And then, you know, then there's the hard work, the reviewing the 126 page article, the everything that means you'll get this. And that's an individual goal along the path, right? This degree alone doesn't do exactly, it doesn't achieve everything. The next step after that will be. Getting a job will be publishing articles, will be going to conferences, will be doing book reviews, will be doing all the things that will be steps towards, right, the ideal outcome for you in your career path. And so that's the exploitation thing. And as part of the exploitation, are you going to network with people? Sure. Are you going to acquire additional skills to make your life easier? Yes. You know, that type of thing. And it, and, it, and it'll all add up. And so, you know, that's why exposure, that's why context, that's why the people you're around, all of those things are going to affect, you know, your understanding of what it takes to create an opportunity, your ability to recognize an opportunity based upon risk and return, right? And then your uh, inclination towards exploiting the opportunity and what that means. And again, that's just a combination there of, so if we were to summarize all of this, all we need to say is be exposed as, to as much as you possibly can. And the more you figure out, always put diligent effort towards it, <laughs> right? Because in, in my mind, that's who always becomes successful. People who uh, try to understand things and put diligent effort behind it. Well, that was a good episode. That was I Way like more it. than I was anticipating. Um, I learned a lot in that one just from, you know, hearing how you felt about opportunity. Um, well, before we head out, do you have any closing words that you'd like to say to the listeners? Listener? Well, you know, give us give us a give us a shout out on the social media handles, you know, let people know about this podcast. Check us out, you know, on our website to make sure you're up to date on everything we're doing right now. And yeah, on your favorite podcasting app. Or all the podcasting apps. I don't care. Just go in here and give us a great comment. Give us a great review. That type of thing. All that will help us out. Awesome. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show. We hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to Reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.